previously on Libel the Bible. I unwrap the first of my Star Trek Advent goodies. Yeah, can't wait until you waste ten minutes unwrapping your second one this week. No, it gives the audience a break from your incessant rambling about nothing. Anyway, God laid out specific instructions to the Israelites. He covered everything from animal sacrifices to proper priestly rituals. I rambled incessantly about nothing. Oh, stop whining. I mistakenly accused Ice-T of anti-Semitism. I defended millennials and complained about my pension. And now, episode 25 of Libel the Bible. So, welcome to the Lab of the Bible. We had to start again because Rusty was looking at me creepy and it made me uh, feel weird, so we had to start over. I mean, I haven't been around you in, what, like a week and a half, ten days, Has so now I'm half? looking at you. Why? Oh, this is a, this may be, we might be celebrating two firsts. This might be our first time recording on a Wednesday, mm-hmm. and it's our 25th episode. 25th episode, which is what, wood? That's, <laughs> well... <laughs> I have wood right now, but I believe 25 oh. is silver. All right. So this is our silver uh, silver episode. What are we going to Silver episode. We're going to have a silver season. And what if we actually... 25 years, from, oh, 25, 25 years from now we're going to be doing this? Like we're going to have like an actual silver anniversary? I'm not going to be alive 25 years from now. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to be, what, 74, 25 years from now. How far out do you think I should start like looking for like a like a replacement for you? I think you should have started before we even <laughs> recorded our first episode. I'm completely unstable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, By the way, speaking of unstable, I'm still trying to pin down what your thoughts are on the Bible. <laughs> all right? Because a few weeks ago... We're going right into the Bible, huh? Well, we're not going to, like, we're not talking about the actual okay, okay. text that we're covering. You're talking about me. Right. Okay. It's a combination of the text and you, but only because I'm trying to get to know you, Scott. I'm I'm not yeah. trying to malign you. I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm just trying to understand you mm-hmm. so I can love you more. Uh, on that note, I'm going to do my patented uh, drop. Hold on while you get your thoughts together. My thoughts are together. It's a Syrah, not that you asked. I didn't ask. I unboxed it today from my wine delivery. You should find a more comfortable place for the glass, because like you're reaching under your when, mic arm. Yeah, this is a bad spot for it. Yeah. And it's not like I'm going to spill it. Why ever. don't you like have it? Oh, because my mic arm is on that yeah. side, so you can't put the glass yeah. down. Well, I'll but, figure it out. Listen, listen man, we don't, we're, not, we're only here for a couple couple more sessions, and then we're going to be in the right. you know, state-of-the-art studio. In our studio. Yeah. So here's a discrepancy that I noticed. About two or three episodes ago, we were talking about, you know, all the different things that Yahweh could be. Mm-hmm. An Atlantean, Superman, a dinosaur, <laughs> like all the different things that were more realistic and reasonable than him being a god. And you really, like, first of all, you believe that it happened. Um, this is what you claimed. Okay. You believe that it happened and that it was an alien. Was that the beginning of an episode or the end of an episode? <laughs> it was like in the middle of an episode. Oh, we were like then, having then, a conversation and discussion. And I guess I got to stick by that. I mean, you said it was an alien. Now, the discrepancy came in episode 24 where we were discussing the government hearings in Congress, the government being U.S., we're a U.S.-centric show, so we live in the U.S., so when we talk about the government, it's going to be the U.S. government, unless we say otherwise, for all our international listeners. Disclaimer. I mean, we were, like, number, like, 100-something in South Africa for a while, right? Can, can I pause you for a second? Sure. Speaking of countries, when I was updating the website last night, I was looking at our, our stats, mm-hmm. and I saw, oh, we didn't have any more countries, mm-hmm. new countries. Not realizing they weren't putting them there alphabetically. They were doing it by percentage of listeners were from the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's like five more countries I got to oh, add. Oh, shit. Nice. That's like all the countries. Now. All the countries. Yeah, they so. keep adding countries just <laughs> for our show. Yes, they keep yes. running out of countries. Yes. So you're talking about the government, yes. 
So the government is having hearings about UFOs or had hearings about UFOs. And we spent like, you know, three, four minutes talking about it. And our conclusion was, although we both believe in uh, intelligent life somewhere, probably in our galaxy, definitely the universe, um, in all likelihood, it wasn't aliens like that. Right. Right. So... Right, so that's the discrepancy. The discrepancy is you believe that <laughs> Yahweh is an alien, He's but you one. don't believe like what um, pilots have picked up on radar and people on like American naval ships have seen floating in the sky that they can't identify. Wait, you, wait, wait. You're going to believe those guys <laughs> over this account, <laughs> this historical record? <laughs> Uh, you know what? I didn't think of it that <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think of it that okay. way. Get off Maverick's dick, all right? All right? No, no. I, now I see it. So you're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. How many Top Gun pilots do you think have their wife locked up in a cage? You still haven't you know? seen it? No. <laughs> no, it's not Tom. Tom Cruise's wife isn't locked up in a cage. She used to be. His wife escapes cages. Right. Yeah, she escaped, yes. Right. It's the other guy's wife. Tom Cruise is like boss's wife that's locked up in a cage somewhere. Right, right, right. Miss Cavage. That's right. I'm calling him out by name. Yeah, fuck him. Fuck that guy. What are you going to send us to the CBs? Yeah, I mean, we're nobodies. Yeah. Um, did we finish the point we were making just now? Yeah. Oh. You can. Oh, oh, oh you I'm convinced conflicted. Me. I'm conflicted. No, well, you convinced uh, me that, you know, I shouldn't trust the government. Or anything I say, because... <laughs> You either could be like either sent I believe, here by the smoking man. I, either I believe Ye- Yahweh is an alien, but I don't believe any aliens have visited us. Maybe, maybe because the book's not over, maybe Yahweh's going to say, this place is fucked up. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm not coming back here. Well, they put like a warning buoy around Earth, like don't know, so other ships don't <laughs> approach. Like this place is a train wreck. What, just like traffic cones all yeah, around like, like, the, the planet? This, this, like Star Trek does it all the time. Yeah. <gasps> Speaking of Star Trek. Oh, shit, the advent. All right, all right. Can I open up number two? Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, why don't you talk while you're off mic while okay. you're doing I, it? I read to reach for it. Damn. Then keep your mouth shut. This, this box is really light. Oh, it's really light. Number two. Maybe it's what, cufflinks. Wait, you want to make a prediction? Um. All right, it's almost cube-shaped. What was like last what? week's? It was a deck of cards. Okay. Yeah, all right, it yeah. was a d- shitty deck of cards. Yeah, like, with like five. Yeah, like they didn't even have Picard on any of the faces. <gasps> Why would they not have pick cards That's what I'm saying. on a deck on of a cards? cards. <laughs> That's good, Scott. That is good. You're such a dad. <laughs> it's just amazing. Like being right, oh, predictions. It's really light. Yeah. Oh shoot. You want to uh-huh. Yeah. So I like this. I hope it's not breakable. Oh, that is really light. It's like the packaging looks like it makes up the bulk of the weight. So maybe a maybe a pin, like a like a pin that goes on your lapel. Maybe. Maybe it's like a handkerchief. It feels like nothing, like cloth. It's wrapped in the Borg tissue paper. I think I'm right. Just by, like, I feel like it's, it feels flat on one side, and it feels like an like right. earring. Let's let's open it up and see, man. I just want to point out that I, I think I'm right. <laughs> it's, it's, oh, my God. It's an Admiral James Kirk pin from, like, Star Trek Two. All right, cool. It's um, it's a little it's about a two inch pin and it's Admiral Kirk with a big massive head and he's wearing like what the undiscovered country no, those uniform? Those are Star Trek two uniforms, man. Star Trek two? James T. Kirk is Admiral shown here as he appeared in the duh, twenty two eighty five. The Wrath of Khan. Twenty two eighty five oh it does. When he faced the revenge of his old enemy Khan, the uniform had a turtleneck undershirt and a double breasted openable jacket. So I am one it's for one on guesses. Why did it? So, okay. Question. It's a turtleneck sweater. Um, Are they controlling? Are they setting different temperatures on the deck of the Enterprise based on like the uniform that they wear? So, in other um, words, they're wearing turtleneck sweaters. So, they turn the temperature down to like 64 Fahrenheit because they're all like sweatered up. Whereas, like, you know, he, he when they go money. to the short sleeves. Heat costs money, so they don't want to turn the heat up. You think heat costs money on the Enterprise? I Actually, thought, probably. I thought they eliminated the need for like money because they're so like evolved in the future. Oh, oh, maybe maybe there's a resource cost to heating the ship. Yeah, not so much money, but like it's not of coal, like in the, or, or firewood. 
I don't know, man. Really? Yeah, <laughs> really? I don't fucking know. In the future? Yeah, why not? You think they're spending money on, like, uh, powering the Enterprise? Uh, excuse me? Yeah. You think they have windmills on the outside of the thing? <laughs> Going vroom, vroom, vroom. What happens when there's no wind, like, in space? Well, doesn't, like, the warp core power everything? Yeah. Yeah. See, they, they, they don't show you the dark side. Like, the people shoveling coal into the damn thing. Well, they did have that animal, right? And uh, what's the show? You keep Is, bringing up Discovery, man. That, that Discovery. Animal. You they, like that animal. The tardigrade. Isn't that's not part of like the? Uh, yeah, that's not part of the uh, uh, canon at this point. Yeah, it's canon. That's terrible. That's terrible <laughs> that they're adding to Star Trek canon with that terrible show. Mm, mm. It's gotten better. It's just a, you know, has it? Yeah, they jumped to the few. Oh, I don't want no spoilers. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah. Yeah. It took about three seasons, but it's getting better. Okay. And you're watching the new uh, one? Strange New Worlds. Love it. It's good. How many episodes in is it? I think it? I'm in four now. You recommend it? I do recommend it. As it's someone very... like who likes the next generation. It's Star Trek. Uh, yeah. It's got an old original series feel to it. Mm-hmm. But so far, there's been no story arc. Like yeah. You know, all these series come out that you have to watch every episode. Mm-hmm. They seem like standalone episodes, which is what I was looking forward to. Oh. I like that. Yeah, so you can say, oh, it's the one I with like the... It. There mm. should be more shows at this point that have the standalone episodes yeah. without, like, those, like, story arcs. I, I agree, man. It's okay to have, like, a subtle underlying arc, but not, like, the whole, like, like if you miss an episode, you know what the fuck's going no, on. No, it's, it's okay to have shows that rely entirely on story arcs. But why does every show on yeah. TV have to be that at they this point? Make it, they want to make it binge worthy. Like, like everything's even, got, every every episode's got to be a cliffhanger. Nothing gets wrapped up. Yeah. So you have to keep going. So you got to keep watching it. Yeah. But I mean, I watched other shows that were episodic. I got to tell you, the first show I ever binge watched was strange. I was down. I was uh, down in North Carolina. And everybody I was with was going out, and I was just I was tired, so I was laying on the floor, and I watched uh, um, that CSI show from uh, in Vegas. Yeah, not the new one. I think CSI new one. Vegas. No, before it was C- it was just CSI. Oh right, because they didn't have to distinguish that right, was in right. Vegas because there were no other CSI. So, so I right? watched I watched an episode. I was like, yeah, I think I'm just gonna hang here while y'all go out, man. I, I ended up watching like eight straight episodes of that show. Right, and there's like no, there was no arc. Right, like until the later seasons, but there's like nothing. There's always an arc, but it's like not for the plot. The right. arc is always like in their interpersonal like relationships. Right. Um, the last series that I watched that was, you know, a self-contained episode was also a procedural. You know what a procedural is? Like, it was like a yeah, like a like a like um like CSI. Like a, <laughs> I was I was I was thinking I was trying to think of like Law and Order. Like yeah, like every like, every episode basically follows the exact yeah. same like structure. Right. So usually procedurals, you know, you don't you can't have story arcs because they're procedurals. Every episode follows the same like basic framework. Uh House. House. I never MD. watched House. Oh, it was so good. Because it was like it was basically Sherlock Holmes, but for like illnesses. You know, like every episode someone showed up and house didn't care about like treating anybody unless like it was like some fantastic like mystery like if you know if it was easy to diagnose he didn't care yeah, he was overqualified for that shit so that was a really good show because do you think you read Leviticus because there's some there's some medical advice in this <laughs> yeah well House was a genius so like I think he knew everything oh okay. like I'm pretty sure he knew everything all right hey, you want to pop that line on man the switch on the left it's getting a little shadowy in here there we go. Now you can see your tiny hand right yeah, in for your yeah. notes for the episode. Yeah. As soon as this book is done, I'm not doing notes like this anymore, I told you. So. All right, let's do uh, Leviticus like 10. Teleprom- Leviticus 10. Nadab right. and Abihu. Nabob and B- B- Nabi- Abihu. <laughs> Ab- right. You said that you were going like, to take the time I, I, to learn right. names and not be so a that's why I repeated you to make scumbag sure was, southerner. Yeah. <laughs> South Queens in the heart. No, not South Queens, oh. like the South, you know, like not every Southerner, obviously, just the stereotypical Southerner. I will add this to the list of Ignorant people. Ignorant of like others and like will, making fun of others that, that are different. People that won't listen to us because of your hatred. <laughs> Well, if someone is an ignorant Southerner that's taking offense to this, I mean, you know. 
Oh, so when you just say Southern, you mean not all of the so the, the, those I, are the good ones over I, there. I specifically qualified. I said not every Southerner. I said only the stereotypical Southerner. <laughs> I'm trying very hard not to like, start <laughs> gaslighting you right now. <laughs> Yeah, Rusty. And, hey. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me. You know what? They might not have understood what I'm saying. So, what I'm saying is, there's some Southerners. <laughs> I don't think you're making it better. Yeehaw. I don't think you're making it better, man. Uh, all right. I'm sorry. Um, I'll you, stop. You can edit it out if you feel like it's really nah, offensive. Nah, nah, nah. No, we'll add it to the list. Um. All right. So these are these are two Aaron sons. And now this this just starts off, like no credits have rolled, like the show just started. There's two guys. Are they are they token up? They put like their incense in like a thing, and they they well, put, put some holy. So God has given everybody very specific instructions about like what the priests are supposed to do performing a ceremony. All right, these guys are priests. Yeah. So Nadab and Abihu are Aaron's sons. They're Moses' nephews, Mm -hmm. Aaron's his brother, um, and God chose them specifically to be the priests in the tabernacle. And so um, Leviticus 10 starts with them performing the ritual of burning the incense. And God gave very specific instructions on how the incense are supposed to be burned. Yeah. They did not apparently burn them the right way. And what happened? Uh, they got burned. <laughs> Consumed God, by God, fire. God burned them. Dead. So yeah. I got a couple of things. I like what you were saying, but I was thinking, for some reason, when the way they described it, I felt like it was two kids ran off to like smoke some smoke a doobie under the bleaches <laughs> or something. Right. And they stood too close to like an exhaust port. Right. And like it, it vented on them right. when they were like doing it. But now I'm thinking, no. It's like you said, there were specific ways of doing things. Mm-hmm. They did it wrong yeah. and ignited something. Because they didn't follow the safety protocols. Oh, so going along with the whole like alien and I'm sticking with this as a rocket ship. Interesting. And because he says the presence of the Lord, we I know we covered that, but did we determine what the presence of the Lord was? I think that's just when the ship is docked, like the presence. Oh, okay. It's weird. Yeah, you're like I got to start reading it like how you're reading it, like a lot more like literally and like along like the whole alien plot line. Maybe we start like like uh, cha- changing out some of the names. Like Ar- Aaron could be like Buck Rogers. <laughs> uh, uh, who's the story? Moses could be like Thomas A. Swift or something. Right. Flash you know? Gordon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we look at it. All right. So yeah. All right. So then, of course. Moses shows zero sympathy to his brother. Yo. Like zero sympathy. And by the way, these are his nephews. And by the way, this is like, it's not like they've been doing this ritual for years. This is literally the first time that they're in the tabernacle. So you would think they would get a little leeway. <laughs> no, they get burned to death by God, right? With fire. Yeah. So, <laughs> they didn't get any leeway, but they got a lot of Yahweh. Oh, <laughs> shit. And so it starts. <laughs> so Leviticus 10, uh, verse 3. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord meant when he said, Through those who are near me, I will show myself holy. And before all the people, I will be glorified. And Aaron was silent. What the fuck did that mean? First of all, I don't know what it means. It was an I told you so, but I don't understand how that's an I told you so. Yeah, he's like rubbing it in his face almost like, this is what God meant when he said, like, you better like, you know. Oh, so he was basically translating the damn cryptic words that God threw out in the first place and goes, oh, that means you're going to get burned the fuck up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know why God had to burn them. I don't know why there wasn't like a, a like classes on how to do this yeah because you know what if they there's just like verbal instructions if they did not understand the words and that they should have raised their hands right well don't be don't be afraid to say i don't understand this like these are ridiculous rules and it was a lot of them so i think you're logically right but god i keep saying god and it's pissing me yahweh. off yahweh you want to have, like have a god jar 
Like we pull every time like, I say like a quarter in God. Or yeah. Yeah. No. Um, so Yahweh has been so irrational the whole time. I would be afraid of him. Like I might not want to ask questions either. Good point. But I certainly don't want to get burned up by him because I didn't understand the, <laughs> the process either. Remember that time Yahweh killed a guy because like he pulled out and like came on the floor? <laughs> Yeah, like well, Yahweh, just like you know. Yeah, but we we didn't we determine like he was doing he was kind of being secretive, like he didn't stop fucking her, he just stopped. Yeah, yeah I understand. Yeah, so, so this is a different level. I, I get it, but like I'm saying, if that's the death penalty, then what's the penalty for someone who like rapes a child and then kills a child? Same thing. I think that's encouraged. The same like level book. of. <laughs> that's fucked up. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see, right? Well, it's like this. You can't you can't think like the Bible has reached its bottom yet. Like like the Walking Dead, we didn't get Negan in season one. Well, they like, reached some bottoms in Sodom, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like you can't get the worst like in the first two books or three books. Like I'm sure it's gonna get worse. All right. I mean it could get better, but I, I don't I don't see I mean it's been better. pretty bad. It's been pretty bad. So I'm I'm thinking this. I'm not blaming God for this one. I think what happened was either one, they were doing something shady, and they were like, like I said, by an exhaust port, they shouldn't have been near, or they failed to follow the instructions. God didn't smite them. Yeah. Like, they just fucked up and blew themselves up. Yeah. It was like like when you're free basing, and like, you, you burn yourself up. Yeah, sure. Which are or like, or you're cooking like meth, and you blow up like the lab. Yeah. Yeah. I think they just screwed up the process. You think that's what was going on? I, I don't think, this, what, they were cooking meth? Like something like that, maybe. Like I said, not when they said, meth, but something for Yahweh that he needs to consume. If they fucked something up. I'm not blaming God for this. They didn't follow directions. I think this was an accident, and I don't think this was like they fucked up and I'm killing them for it. I think they got killed because they fucked up. So they blew themselves up. You think? Yeah. yeah. Well, in any event, Moses gets like his cousins. He calls up two of his cousins. He's like, yo, we got to sneak a couple of bodies out the back and, like, bury it behind, like, camp. Do you think Moses turned to Aaron <laughs> and said, did you see a sign on my lawn <laughs> that said dead priest storage? Man, you know I didn't see no shit like that. I mean, Bonnie's going to be home any minute now. Oh, man. So he gets these two goons. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> These two cleaners. Yeah. They got to sneak the, the burnt bodies of Nadab and Abihu out and, like, bury that out of sight. And I kind of got the impression they weren't treating the bodies with any kind of respect. They, like, just grabbed them by, like, the, the necks of their yeah, shirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, like, drag them out. And then, speaking of no respect, I get <laughs> no respect, I tell you. He tells Aaron and Aaron's two remaining sons, the brothers of Nadab and Abihu, He says in Leviticus 10, verse 6, And Moses said to Aaron and to his sons, Eliezer and Ithamar, Do not dishevel your hair, and do not tear your vestments, or you will die, and wrath will strike all the congregation. So what he's saying is, this is the way the Israelites mourn. Like, they they rip off, like, a piece of their, like, clothing, you know, and he's basically telling them, you can't mourn. I did not get that impression. What's the impression that you got? Uh, well, you're saying something historic. Like you're saying Israelites tear their, the dish, they make themselves a mess to mourn. That's part of mourning. Well, let me finish reading. Okay. Uh, right. So I'll start over and then you tell me. And Moses said to Aaron and to his sons, Eliezer and Ithamar, do not dishevel your hair and do not tear your vestments or you will die and wrath will strike all the congregation. But your kindred, the whole house of Israel, may mourn the burning that the Lord has sent. You shall not go outside the entrance of the tent of meeting, or you will die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is on you. So, one, he's saying you can't mourn. You're not allowed to mourn. So, yes, uh... Jews, when they mourn, they rip like a piece of like their collar off or something. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's like one thing. Um, but the congregation can mourn, he says. And you can't step out of the tent because the anointing oil is on you. 
Go ahead, Scott. All right. So I read it like this, not knowing that that, that ritual that you just mentioned. I thought, all right, you're going to go in there. Don't tear your vestments. Now I understand why, because I guess that's a that's a, it's a sign of mourning, right? Because you'll surely die because you cannot rip your bio suit and go into this area, right? With your bio seat fucked up. Well, that that up. might be that might still be the case because they are inside, and you can't go outside because the anointing oil is on you, and we all know the anointing oil is that sanitizer to be inside the tent with the, 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 the Yahweh. But why can't they use it outside? Um, would it kill people outside? You think? I think you know. It's a whole new uh thing. I never know. Did they ever like take the oil off before they went outside? Maybe it wears off after a little while. When it's like sunscreen, you got to reapply often. I mean, especially yeah. if you're swimming or sweating in any way. Yeah, you think there's a lot of swimming going on or at the <laughs> base of Mount Sinai? There's some sweating. <laughs> like holy <laughs> crap. <laughs> <laughs> One little screw up. <laughs> oh, and then there was um, like a like a, a law came down like yo, no alcohol or strong drink before entering the tent. Right, that's a safety precaution. It's like until you know how alcohol affects you, do not drive or act, operate heavy machinery. Mm-hmm. So. Maybe the, maybe they're alluding to the fact that these two brothers that got burned up were drunk on the job and they skipped like a lockout tag out procedure or something. I mean, honestly, they didn't allude to anything. They just started the chapter and like they started the incense and then they were dead. It's like um, you know, when you like uh, when you start watching a show and like it comes on right after the next the last show and then you get like a scene and then it goes to the credits. There's yeah. a name for that, like cold open or something. Cold open, like this, like a per- it's like a cold open. Like you see some two two drunks <laughs> fucking around, you know, with the wrenches, not knowing what the fuck they're doing, <laughs> and then it's like Leviticus ten, <laughs> right? Like lost, <laughs> yeah. boom, yeah. yeah. So then, um, after they mention no alcohol, they say, well, to make up for this, go barbecue. So this is this part I do not understand at all. So we're gonna read it. Right. Let's break it down. Break it down. All right. Leviticus ten, verse twelve. Um, I'll stop at verse sixteen, and then we'll do verse sixteen after because I didn't understand that part either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Moses spoke to Aaron and to his remaining sons, Eliezer and Ithamar. <laughs> The guys that have left. I'm sorry, that's not funny. Too soon. <laughs> By the way, it's not just Aaron's remaining sons, right? These are Moses's um, nephews. Yeah, and they're so the priesthood, two of, right? They're the priesthood. Well, these guys weren't even supposed to be the priests. The Nadab and Abihu were supposed to be the priests, and all they did was burn incense wrong. So now you've got these two guys. Moses, is like, yo. Your brothers are dead. You're going to be the priest now. Just don't fuck up. Everything will be all right. Do you think it was like Darth Vader turning to, like, after he choked, force choked out one of <laughs> right. the generals and said, get somebody on the line. goes, you two are in charge now. Don't disappoint me. Well, that's exactly what he did, right? He was like, congratulations. Uh, you're in charge of the fleet now. Oh, shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, it's exactly like that. So Moses spoke to Aaron and to his remaining sons, Eliezer and Ithamar. Take the grain offering that is left from the Lord's offerings by fire and eat it unleavened beside the altar, for it is most holy. You shall eat it in a holy place because it is your due and your son's due from the offerings by fire to the Lord. For so I am commanded. Were the offerings by fire to the Lord the two guys? <laughs> oh, shoot. No, no, because they dragged them out. No. They dragged them out and threw them in the dump. All right. But the breast that is elevated and the thigh that is raised, this is the goat they're talking about, right? They're talking about like killing a goat. I would say breast, no. It would probably be some sort of fowl, like maybe a chicken or something. Right. But the breast that is elevated and the thigh that is raised... You and your sons and daughters as well may eat in any clean place, for they have been assigned to you and your children from the sacrifices of the offerings of well-being of the people of Israel. 
The thigh that is raised and the breast that is elevated, they shall bring together with the offerings by fire of the fat to raise for an elevation offering before the Lord. They are to be your due and that of your children forever as the Lord has commanded. I, I, I honestly... Halfway through that, I literally was looking at you and I heard... Like it was just... It's, it's nonsense. It almost sounds like maybe... Maybe they're like... You guys are in charge now, but yo, check it out, man. You get to eat this this, this good food. They're like maybe they're like, they're like trying to like um, I don't know, sell them on their new job. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it, yes, it sounds like someone like making is, something re- up as they're going along. Yeah, either that or like he's stroking out in the middle of like <laughs> you know, like he sort of knew what the instructions were, and then he just started stroking out while. Telling them the instructions. Well, while reading this part, I, and we came across the elevation offering, which we've come across in several yeah. episodes. I think I know what the elevation offering is. Gets now. you getting you high, getting you stoned. No, 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 no. They actually hold it up. Because um, could you hold that up, please? Because the camera is mounted at the bottom of the ship. Okay. And like they can't see it too clearly, so right. they want to. They have to hold it up to show that it's like the right type of meat. Right. They don't have like a zoom lens, like when it's. You don't think so. So you think like aliens that traveled like light years? Listen, I just think no matter how advanced you get, somebody does something like 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 forgetful. Like there's um, always stupid bullshit. Like you know how come we didn't think of like right? Do, like like how come nobody thought of putting a door here or like right. you know like why why are we using that shitty camera? Right. That makes sense. And you gotta understand like when we launch space probes, like the technology we use by the time it gets to where it's going, it's like twenty five year old technology. Right, and it's usually even older than that because you use the most reliable tech of the day. You don't use cutting edge tech. Mm. So when this ship launched, it was the best camera they had. So you think this is like that planet's like version of Elon Musk, like sending someone to like Earth, or it's Elon Musk himself, or it's Elon Musk. Oh, I saw a license plate on a Tesla the other day. I took a picture of it. Mm-hmm. It was it said T H X space Elon. Have you heard about, like, the probe that's going on now with the Teslas? No. So there were over 500-something deaths last year from Teslas that were in uh, self-driving mode. Mm. And apparently what was going on in a lot of other Teslas was was literally the second before an accident, the self-driving mode would turn itself off. So, like, they had programmed, like, the self-driving mode to turn off before oh. an accident so that if there was an accident and they reviewed the computer, the computer would show that it wasn't in self-driving mode. The autopilot was not engaged. Yeah. Human error. Right. How many of those 500 were people, like, recording, like, like, like having sex in a moving car without driving it videos? Yeah. I don't know. There were definitely, like, a shit ton of people who were, like, sleeping or watching movies. Not for nothing, um, Rob, he has a Tesla, and he would drive in from Pennsylvania um, to pick up some stuff and then drive back. And, like, he would say he would put it in self-driving mode on the highway, like, in New Jersey, Mm. and he would just chill. Like, he'd be on his phone just, like, chilling. I think you have to, like, touch the steering wheel once in a while to show you, like, you're still awake or something. Possibly. Something like that. Possibly, yeah. I can I can understand maybe like in like the highways of other states, maybe you can get away with that because this like the the road markings are like clear, right? Like, could you imagine like self driving more on the Gowanus? <laughs> get the fuck. I out mean, of here. yes, I can imagine one day having something like that, but not this day. Like, my, 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 we can't even complete the fucking Gowanus. <laughs> it's literally it's been under construction <laughs> since the late seventies. You saw a week like a week ago, some guy. Flew off the Gowanus. No. The elevated part. No. Hit a warehouse and landed on the sidewalk upside down. Holy shit. Was he all right? <laughs> he got up and walked away. That's good. Yeah. I probably just got a PCP wore off. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You crashed in the Gowanus? I did. I yeah. fucking wrecked myself on a Gowanus. And yeah. I went out of scratch. It was like the first car my parents ever bought, like brand new. It was like the first right. I bought car, car they bought brand parents. new. Yeah. yeah. It's my first car. Yeah. It lasted me 30 days. Yeah. That's great. Yo, I'll never forget, man, when the tow truck driver pulled up. <laughs> and 
And he was like, yeah, you think you want to get, you want to try and fix it? And he's like, just kidding, too soon. Like, it, well, too soon wasn't a thing yeah. like that. Like, he was wrecked. Oh, man. Good car, though, man. I didn't get a scratch on me. Yeah, I didn't great. even have any whiplash. Great. Was man. there uh, no airbags back then? No, right? no. It was an 84 Audi. 500. No, Audi 5000. Audi 5000, yes, yeah. which became the Audi 100 when they got I don't know what it became, but yeah. Yeah. So that car, I remember having to call you and get a hold of your father the first day I drove it to work. Yeah. I must have left the headlights on or something, uh-huh. and the car was dead. So I got somebody, you know, to help me jump the car. First day at a new job, I popped the hood. There's no battery. Can't find the fucking battery. Oh, that's right. It was that under was... the back seat of the car. No, I you don't had, think yes, that was you it. had to pop op- up the back seat the way you sit in the back seat for to the, get the battery? battery. Yeah, really? Yeah. Because I remember that was one of the that was when like new cars, especially German cars, used to be able to open up the hood of a car and you could see like all the components. Here's the battery. Here's mm. the starter. Here's like you know what I mean, mm. whatever cable, the alternator, the Audi, that Audi. The whole like engine was covered. There was like a covering. You couldn't like you had to like disassemble like a whole bunch of shit to get at things. You don't remember that? Hmm. On and, the Audi? Yeah. Dude, I had it for 30 days. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I wrecked it before I had to do any maintenance That's on funny. it. Oh, another thing about that car. It was so it was, it was a eighty four right yeah and it had a Benzy box. Mm-hmm. Your parents had like a, like a blop punked at the time or whatever yeah. it was. It's a pretty yeah. kick ass stereo. Yeah. So even at the time I had it though, it was a little outdated to have a Benzy, but there was a lot of there was a lot of crime uh, car theft in like Queens. Right. right. So I'd pull Oh the yeah, by the time out. you had the car, it was the it was the radio the where the face you, came off. The face, right. the, the attachable the face, with face you. right. This one was the whole pull out. Yeah, I remember. So uh what was crazy, the car didn't have an alarm on it. And I lived in a high um car crime neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So do you remember uh the Pink Floyd live album uh Pulse? Pulse. Yeah. And it had the LED that blinked sure. like a heartbeat. Sure, we bought it. We bought it at Tower Records the night that it came out in the Village. Yeah, and then we stood online at midnight. We the store opened. We bought it, and then we got super stoned. We were listening to Pulse, the, the CD or whatever the tape, because we bought both CD and tape for the car, like the the tape to listen to right, the car. Right, you didn't have CD plays on the car right. yet. And on the way home, on the LIE, we saw a goddamn billboard truck. Yes, a billboard of truck. Pulse. <laughs> that was trippy, man. That was awesome. While yeah. we were listening yeah. to Pulse, yeah. and yeah. on the billboard truck was that eye yeah, that with cover, the with cover like on, yeah. right with the blinking like light. Yeah, that was tr- crazy. That was awesome. So, I didn't have an alarm, so I took the, the CD apart. Because, you know, when the batteries finally died and it lasted forever, yeah. you could pull it out and put two AA batteries in mm-hmm. there to recharge it. I took that whole sleeve out, and when I would pull the radio, the Benzy box out, I would slip that thing in there. So, if everybody looked in my car, it looked like I had an alarm oh, system. Yeah, an alarm. Oh, clever, right? That's smart, man. You're really smart, Scott. <laughs> I am smart. Not smart how I wrecked that car. Yeah, but. that was great. Yeah. All right. I only I only wrecked my car and me. I didn't wreck it. I didn't hit anybody else. I avoided everybody else. Right. So that was a long way of saying that it's possible that that planet's Tesla could have landed on this planet. Oh yeah, where, where did this come from? <laughs> That's right. how okay. it started. Right. So they, their cameras sucked. They had to hold it up. Right. Yeah. So all right. So this gets us to uh, verse sixteen, Leviticus ten, verse sixteen. More shit I don't understand. Wait, wait, before you do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, um, you talking about the breast and the thigh? Well, after that, um, Moses discovered that a great sin offering was barbecued but wasn't eaten. Mm-hmm. And he, like, flipped about it. It's like, oh, horrors. Weren't you supposed to do this? Right. And then Aaron's, like, he defends their actions, and then Moses agreed. And like, No, this is the listen- part that I'm about to read oh, right now. really? Yeah. I'm going to go get that highlighter you mentioned. So... Then Moses made inquiry about the goat of the sin offering, and it yeah. had already been burned. Yes, and there's like an it. actual exclamation mark. I, 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 well, I didn't highlight it, but I put it really big. Like, yeah. this is big. This is big. He was angry with Eliezer and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons, who, by the way, their brothers have just been burnt. 
Yeah. Like, this all seems like it's taking place, like, you know, like, right there. It's quick. This in the moment, this, right? This, like, this there's moving. no time. Yeah. So, he's just called them in. They weren't even prepared to do this. So, all right. So, like, they didn't do things exactly by the book. He was angry with them and said, Why did you not eat the sin offering in the sacred area? For it is most holy, and God has given it to you that you may remove the guilt of the congregation to make atonement on their behalf before the Lord. Like, the fuck? Like, we're moving dead bodies, dude. Like, what the fuck? Like... Yeah, like, maybe, I, I, you know what? Maybe I'm not that hungry. Like my brothers just got burnt to death. Like I don't have an appetite. Yeah, what the fuck? Like why can't there be a period of mourning for them? You know why? They were looking for the brightly colored comforter to lay on the floor. So if any John Q. Law passed by at first <laughs> glance, everything Law, right. everything was looking normal. <laughs> Matter of fact, <laughs> why am I back here? <laughs> you picking up this priest's brain. <laughs> I'm the guns of the Navarro. <laughs> I'm a race car in the red. <laughs> I'm a mushroom cloud laying motherfucker, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm ro- TNT. All right. That's, an- <laughs> 90s. Um, that's a 90s reference, by the way. That's 90s, not 80s. We had the plus minus uh, at three for Scott's 80s references today. Oh, speaking of uh, stuff, I want to add another web- part to the website. I want to give out awards. What do you want to do? I want to give out awards on the website. Okay. You said park? I don't know what I said. All right. I want <laughs> like to plug out- the website? Uh, yeah, www.libelthebible.com. Yeah. But, but, uh, and I want to give the guys the opening, the opening scene, the dob, and... And a Bihu, the award for the quickest a named character gets eliminated. <laughs> like, no, they've been named. They were already named. They really? were named. They were talked about. Absolutely. When they ran down all those lists that we just skimmed through. Yeah, they were. Right, they were back. If they, if, if they were not named, mm-hmm. I'm, 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 I'm giving them the award. Because like right. seven words into their story, yeah. they're dead. They're dead. I was thinking. Well, There's well, been other people. I was thinking. Well, what There's about that Egyptian that Abraham people. killed? Like, like as soon as he got out of the tent, but he was not named. No, there were definitely people in Genesis that, like, the guy that dropped his load on the floor. Like that guy was like. But you knew about him for a while. These guys, you literally seen no, just in this scene. No, you didn't. Oh no, that was like the son of someone. All right. Okay. Well, he probably he probably he like died three paragraphs in. This guy. These people died seven words into. I get this your story. point. They died very quickly after being introduced. Very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. All right. All right maybe fuck the awards. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, man. You're right. Yeah. I should have coddled <laughs> you and <laughs> what you, you know, continue on with your beliefs. Uh... No matter how wrong and stupid they Yeah, were. so basically Aaron says Mo- tells Moses to chill out about the burnt offering And Moses agreed. So then he continues. Oh. He says, Its blood was not brought into the inner part of the sanctuary. You should certainly have eaten it in the sanctuary as I commanded. And Aaron spoke to Moses. See, today they offered their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord. And yet such things as these have befallen me. If I had eaten the sin offering today, would it have been agreeable to the Lord? And when Moses heard that, he agreed. I don't know what any of that means. Yeah. I think they left parts out. Maybe they got lost in translation. I honestly don't know what any of that means. Yeah. Well, you know know what's cool? Because maybe Aaron, in no uncertain terms, said, Moses, these are my last two fucking sons. Fuck you. I don't care if they didn't eat the shit. Right. Like, Like, stop being a dick. Right. And then Moses was like... Hmm, I didn't consider that. You're yeah. right. Your sons yeah. did just get burnt up by Yahweh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking heartless bastard. Yeah, Moses doesn't give a fuck. You already said he's like the worst character, worst character like, so, so far, far, right? And he's proving it. Yeah. Like, even more. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, and listen, if you can be talked off a ledge, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean you're the worst person, but you're still pretty bad that you were even on the ledge. Like, he was ready to, he was ready to kill somebody. Right. 
I'm starting to think that Yahweh purposely chooses these highly flawed people because that's like, like they're already compromised. You know what I mean? So it's easy to bend them to his will. It's easy to manipulate them, right? I remember when Yahweh came and he was campaigning to be their God. He was like, I'm going to choose nothing but the best people. Yeah. The best people in each profession. Yeah, he's going to clean the swamp. Yeah, going to drain the swamp yeah. to clean all that out. Right. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. you know, I didn't like the, I didn't like the first part of Leviticus, but I'm, this is heating up here, man. This is a good action right, packed. So episode. that gets us to uh, Leviticus 11: uh, clean and unclean foods. Okay, it slows down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, so Leviticus 11 is clean and unclean foods and unclean animals. And basically, it just goes through a list of, like, but, foods but, and animals. But you know me, I'm going to dive into the minutiae sure, here. Sure, go ahead. Um, any animal that has divided hoofs and is cleft-footed and chews the cud. So, divided hoofs, like, I guess, pigs and stuff, like mm-hmm. camels, I think. Horses, I think, have... Yeah, Right? Mm-hmm. No, they don't, they don't have divided. It was the back of the hoof. I don't, mm-hmm. No, I don't think they do. Cleft-footed, I think, means kind of like round. I'm not really sure what cleft-footed means. And choose the cud. I looked up cud. Cud's like when they throw up and it's like their own mouth that. and eat it again. Yeah. So it's like I never, I never knew that it, that, that happened. I mean, yeah. I knew, I knew, I knew cows had multiple stomachs. The farm animals are gross. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't eat camels. Because they only fit some of the criteria. See, I don't understand this. He's like, they have to be divided hoofs, cleft-footed, and choose the cud. But then he's like, you can't do camels because they have, like, divided but not cleft. I'm like, all right, it doesn't meet meet the parameters. You got to be, like, a a farmer's almanac expert to understand, like, what animals you're allowed to eat and what you're not allowed to eat. Well, your ass is going to get burned up, right? Right. (laughs) Camels, rock badges, hares, and pigs you can't eat. Right. Good enough. <laughs> you know, rock badges are probably like, rock badges don't give a fuck. <laughs> Basically, if you're a Jew and you live in northern Italy, mm-hmm. get the fuck out because you're not going to be able to eat anything they serve you. Oh, my God. They eat so many rock badges in northern Italy. <laughs> what are you I was talking thinking about? Rabbits. Oh, uh, oh so I was going to say. Pork. Hares. Hares. Uh, a hare's a, a rodent. A hare's a rabbit, though, right? Like the tortoise and the hare. Well, they're the same family. I don't know if a hare is a rabbit. Oh, really? They're part of the same family. So when someone's eating a rabbit, they're not eating a hare? Hares oh. are bigger. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of like a rat that. and a mouse. I think a hare and a rabbit are akin to like what a, a rat and a mouse are. All right. I want to look that up because I'm very interested. By to the know. way, they're all rodents. Rats. Yeah, mice, right. Some are cute though. rabbits, hares, they're all rodents. I'm just wondering because if a hare is a rabbit... They're kind of really picking on the uh, the Cletuses of the world again. Because you remember, eating roadkill is a sin. Sure. And now eating rabbits is a sin also? So you're saying like only country bumpkins like hunt and kill rabbits? Well, like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> <laughs> I was really th- kind of thinking of Elmer Fudd, yeah. But I'm saying I'm Italians rabbits. eat rabbits, man. It- okay, but so... I, and it's funny, I mentioned certain groups of people later on, but if we find out a hare is a rabbit... Yeah. Anybody who eats rabbit is taking the Lord's name in vain because you're professing to be a Bible guy, but mm-hmm. you're eating something that, God, that Yahweh said not to eat. But we don't know if uh, Jesus changed all that. We don't. Like you're Jesus right. could have changed the rules. Shit, you know what right. I mean? You're right. That's what's cool about like a show that's, See, that's what I think. That's what I think is going to happen. I think like Jesus is going to come around and be like, yo. Remember, like, all that old shit that you guys oh, learned? Oh, shoot. That, that was just, that was a joke. <laughs> like, we weren't serious when we said all that. That's, I think, like, you know what I mean? All right. But the problem is, a lot of people, to fuel their hatred, because if they follow Jesus, Jesus was really, like, supposed, to, uh, apparently, like, about love. I don't know. Maybe he said some fucking... Your wife said, I'm going to find him very charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But who knows? Maybe Jesus did say some fucked up shit that, like, Amy's not remembering. Yeah. Okay. You know? Um, but a lot of people who purport to be Christian 
they still cite a lot of bullshit from the Old Testament to justify their meanness. All right. Well, we'll hmm. that's interesting. You know, like all that anti-gay shit. Yeah. All, all like, you know, just... Is it, that's, is, that's Old Testament is shit. Is there gay stuff in the Old Testament? Sodom was... Like, there was gay stuff in Sodom. Okay, but there was just... It was just rape. It was rape of anybody. It was just... It was just debauchery in Sodom. Well, I They mean, didn't mention consensual gay relations. Well, everybody was, like, getting raped. You don't think there was, like, consensual sex in Sodom? I'm sure there was, but that's not why Sodom got burned, I would think. I think they got burned because of the damn rape gangs that were going around. I don't know. I just think they were having the kind of sex that Yahweh didn't like. Yeah. Yeah. They were having, like, um, eyes wide shut kind of, like, fucking sex parties. Yeah. All right, so hares and pigs. Um, Do Jewish people eat pig? That sounds like uh, your stable of girlfriends from... (laughs) The late eighties. <laughs> Hairs and pigs. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so Jewish people don't eat pig, right? No. I mean uh, Jewish people who people who are who eat kosher don't eat pig. Okay. Oh, right, right. He said that. People who are kosher. They said that in the diner. So if if you follow the tenets of Judaism, then you don't eat pig. Um, followers of Islam don't eat pig also, right? I think that's no. the thing. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, do, do, um, and we're not getting into Islam now, but does Islam follow a lot of the stuff that was in the Old Testament of the Bible? Well, or is a lot of the text the same? They be- well, remember... Uh, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are called the Abrahamic religions oh. from Abraham. Okay. So they all believe in Abraham's God, right? Oh. Um, and then Islam believes that like Noah, Moses, then Jesus, they were all prophets the same way mm. Muhammad was a prophet. Right. But Muhammad was like elevated – um, because like he came down with like the final like law. He's like the main prophet. He's like right. the the guy that uh, basically God dictated the Quran to him. Oh, okay. In on the mountain. <laughs> All right, that brings us to water animals. Yeah. So he says everything with fins and scales, mm-hmm. you can eat nothing else. Mm. Who's going to go tell those Italian restaurants <laughs> that the calamari, the scogili, and the clams are done? Well, they don't care because they're not Jewish. But. But. Oh, right. They're, they're Catholic. Oh, yeah. That's why Jews can't eat, like, shrimp or lobster, no I shellfish. Not, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. You don't remember that Seinfeld episode where um, the shrinkage oh, that's episode? Right. When they're out in the Hamptons. He gave her lobster. Out in remember? The Hamptons, yeah. He Great. was like, How's that? How are those eggs? And you thought that would be Michael Richards' most messed up moment, right? <laughs> <laughs> that shrink. was a Michael Richards. That was yeah. Costanza. Oh, that's right. It was Costanza. Costanza had the yeah, shrinkage. Yeah, yeah. She saw it. She told Costanza's girlfriend, who like drove yeah. away in the middle of the night. <laughs> I was in the so pool. He, he got her back by serving her lobster because she's Jewish. Nice. I don't know if that's a, that's an equal. I don't know if that's a proportional response. Oh no, she knew. Oh no, she didn't know. She know what? She didn't know there was a lobster. She didn't eggs. know. Right. So, so he got her back. That's kind of. I don't know if that's proportional, man. It's Costanza proportional. Yeah, sure. He's a lovable loser, right? <laughs> I mean, the real question is, did it make you laugh? <laughs> it did make me laugh. Oh yeah, Kramer. Kramer robbed the f- commercial. Kramer was the guy that, that got he, the lobster. Oh right, right, right. Because yeah. he just found like a line and he pulled the line. Hey, remember up when out that was Michael ocean. Richards' worst offense? <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. Then remember, we go to. We, remember he was in Young Doctors in Love. Yo, he was like the assassin that kept getting fucked up. He had to like kill that one. That like, was Michael Richards. Yeah. I'm going to tell you a story about young doctors in love. Yeah. When I was a youngin, and I have t- I have two older sisters. I don't know if I was going out with both of them or one of them. And you were dating friends. your sisters? No, no, going out like to the movies. Uh, gross. And they brought their little brother with them. I was I w- I thought you were trying to get our southern audience back, so you were like telling them a story they could relate to. 
And I, I want to say Forrest, I mean, I was young. I was like preteen, I think. And we were going to see E.T. whenever E.T. came out. Mm-hmm. Like 82. All right, so I was, probably, yeah, I was preteen. And it was sold out. Oh. So the only movie that was playing that, that was available was Young Doctors in mm-hmm. Love. And I got to see boobies on a big screen for the first time. <laughs> they snuck me into that theater. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was pretty cool, man. Yeah, that's that good. good. And I used to watch that movie all the time. Like when on, it was on HBO and I had it on a VHS tape. And um, I didn't realize Michael Richards was in that. Yeah. Now, if there's any way to get a copy of that, I'll have to watch that again. You had it. Like, you had the copy. Yeah, like a shitty copy because we had like some bootleg HBO that was fuzzy because we couldn't get a line of sight to the Empire State mm-hmm. Building with our antenna. Yeah. yeah, I forgot he he like he had like a catchphrase that he kept repeating. He was like, mm. "This is from like just as he was about to kill whoever." He kept saying like, "This is from," and he was supposed to say like the name of the family that like sent them to kill the person. And then as soon as like right before he was about to say it, like a nurse would open the door, you oh, know, and like he's like go flying yeah. through like you know, <laughs> right. Like um, what was by it the like? end of the movie, he was just like completely like in traction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was like a full body. <laughs> like he kept yes, getting yeah. more and more fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I gotta go check out that movie. Young doctors in love. Uh, if the producers, it was like, like airplane uh, in a hospital. Yeah, we'll sponsor this movie if they uh, we get paid. But um, just just based on our guffawing that the people are hearing now, they're probably gonna say, "Wow, that movie must have been hysterical." Uh, I'm just thinking of uh, Southerners getting hard over you dating your sisters. Oh, yeah. All <laughs> and right, being so... underage, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> being a young live <laughs> <laughs> sister uh, dater. Uh, yeah, so um, then when they went on to uh, birds that can't be eaten, which include eagles, vultures, ospreys. Uh, peace to the... Uh, we lost an osprey full of our servicemen in California last week. Mm-hmm. Went down. Tragic accident. Um, so backing up, uh, what? I don't understand what happened. Uh, um, I think a Marine Corps Osprey yeah. crashed in California, killed like seven Marines. Oh, like an actual, yeah, not a bird. Like the, 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 the hella plane. I thought like the Marines like recruited like Ospreys, like to find mines and stuff. Like I mean, the look, they were do. training dolphins <laughs> to like kill Fidel Castro. Do you think the dolphins didn't kill Fidel Castro? Cause they were, they decided to rape, <laughs> like, cause you know, they're all rapey and stuff. <laughs> Bring it back to fact checks. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. D- did I tell you? I don't know if we said on the when we discussed that. Like, um, when I showed one of my neighbors <laughs> my website, yeah, and I showed the uh, the fact checks, yeah, she read it and she's like, "Oh yeah, dolphins are definitely famously <laughs> rapey." And I was like, "All right, I guess I'm the only one that doesn't know that." <laughs> They're assholes. Yeah, you know so. they get high too. They should. There's like a fish that emits like some kind of something and dolphins know this so they're like they'll bump into the fish with like their dolphin nose and like it emits like this like smoke and like dolphins get like high on it so they like it they, so they purposely yeah so like especially teenage dolphins like teenage dolphins will accost this fish and get like fucking super stoned and fuck around Yo, are you on striped fish? No, mom. <laughs> Just stressed out. I'm tired. <laughs> oh, but it's more like <laughs> click, 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 click. Whatever dolphins yeah. do. I don't <laughs> care. I don't so, what about it? Don't, don't don't koalas get high too? Like on eucalyptus or something? Yes, but koalas don't really get high. They just, they just stay they high. They just, <laughs> <laughs> like they're, just they're always like high. <laughs> they're pickled. You know the. Venereal disease rate amongst koalas is off the fucking chain. Do you think it's because they're high making bad choices? Like, <laughs> or because, like, that's a good question. Like, yo, I'm gonna go hit that hook over the head. Yes, I'm gonna I go think, raw. I'm gonna go raw. I don't think you should. I do don't that, think man. it's because they're high. I think it's the kind of high that they have. Like, they've got that, like, I don't give a fuck high. You know what I mean? Or, like, they're different highs. Or they got that Superman high. Like, that shit ain't gonna happen to me. <laughs> I've seen koalas. I don't think they think of themselves as Superman high. <laughs> I think they're pooky high. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, who, wants, who wants to buy a turkey? <laughs> Man, you was the prom queen. <laughs> uh, it's the laughing portion of our show. <laughs> so, yeah, no ospreys, no buzzards. It says no kites of any kind. Kites? Yeah. So I'm wondering, 
Were the kites reserved for that tree in Charlie Brown's neighborhood? <laughs> like, the one that ate his kite? Yeah, the child, uh, child <laughs> of the kite eating tree. Yeah. 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 I hated that, by the way. My mother in law loves the peanuts. I like peanuts too. Oh my God. I don't <laughs> get it. I, I, I don't get it. It's. It's like so 1950s. Yeah, you know what? It's because in the 1950s, the cartoons you in your in your red iron curtain red block country that you came from, it was like I don't know what it was. <laughs> what, the hell, what the hell cartoons they have? We had there? two kinds of cartoons. We had government propaganda, and then we had cartoons telling you to read the other cartoons. <laughs> who was who was that comedian from Yakov Smirnov? Yeah. What a country! <laughs> Yakov Smirnov. Was yeah. he even from Russia? Probably not. Right? No, nah, yeah, he was what? Russian, yeah. Do you think his name was really Smirnov? Which is that, like, like as Americans, we were just uncultured and be like, oh, they're all high on Smirnov. Like, it's it a- so funny. So <laughs> I forgot where we were. So me, Amy, no, we went somewhere. So, we're, wait, wait, wait. so, so you're with your kid and you don't know where you are. That's a good story. We were in the suburbs, some, like in one of the suburbs, either like on Long Island or north of the city. And I realize anytime you go anywhere outside of like New York City mm-hmm. and there's ethnic food, it always has like a stereotypical name, you know, like it'll be like Godfather's Pizza or like Einstein's Bagels or like, um, you know, Shogun Japanese, yeah, you know, I, I, you know what I mean? I like keep it's for always now. like some stereotypical, it's like Goomba's Italian yeah, subs. Yeah, I got you, I got you. Always watch yeah. next time you leave the city. Not yeah. like, not when you're like out East, East on Long Island well, no, where like, people yeah, have money, yeah, but yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I know what you're saying. In the uncultured areas. <laughs> Right, like the South. Like, next time you're down South. And by the way, those of you down South right now, tell me the name of your local, like, pizzeria. Guaranteed, it's like Goomba Johnny's Pizza, (laughs) right? Godfather's Pizza, Goodfellas Pizza, Uh, Luigi's. uh, That's the plumbing store. That's it. That's, 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 that was my rant. I said, but that's the plumbing place, Luigi's. Luigi's. I know, because Mario, Mario and uh, Luigi, I got it. The plumbers, right. Okay, so don't need any kites, no night hawks, no seagulls, no kind of hawks. I guess a night hawk isn't part of the hawk family. A cormorant. So what? why not just say, like, birds of prey? Are these birds of prey? Sure. What's a cormorant? I don't know what a cormorant I don't know. is. I'm going to highlight with this highlighter that I have. Russ, you want to tell people why I have a highlighter out now? Yeah, so that way, when we transition from one chapter to the next, you can start letting me know so that I can keep up with my notes. Yeah, so yeah, that was Rusty's schooling for the, today. You thought it was over, right? You thought I was just like the best podcaster possible. No, nope, Rusty still finds a way. Uh, no great owls, no water hens, no desert owls, no Carib- Caribbean carry-on vultures, no storks, no herons, no hoopoes, and no bats. Who pose? I believe that was your twenties. Oh, Why not? To, uh, <laughs> Those are the girlfriends from your twenties. <laughs> who cheese, man? Uh, <laughs> sorry, who cheese? <laughs> you know why you couldn't eat storks? Why you couldn't eat storks? Yeah. No. Who's gonna bring the babies, yo? Oh shit! I never even thought yeah, of that. Of That's right. You didn't. That's right. Yeah. So what's after? The, what's after the air? The creatures in the air. Then we go to Leviticus twelve, I believe. No. Oh, no, 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 no. There's no, more? Gonna... Insects. You don't eat swarming insects. You don't eat insects that work on all fours unless, very specifically, they have jointed legs above their feet that they leap on the ground. So I'm assuming it's like insects like that hop like birds. They don't have four legs. You're about to they... go meatless, right? Yeah, again, yeah, I want to do that. Have you heard about insects? I've heard of insects, yes. Have you heard about how insects are becoming the new meat? Um, no. So there's billions of insects, and apparently they're very high in protein, mm-hmm. and people have like started to learn how to cook insects, and eating insects is becoming like a real thing to substitute like eating the traditional meat that we eat. Wow, I believe... You know, you consider insects, they're so small, but I think, and this is years ago, I remember some, 
something like 90% of the biomass on the planet is insects. There's a shit ton of insects. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so like over the past decade, I've seen like, you know, I've read articles, I've seen uh, TV shows, news reports, more and more and more and more. And like, I think it's becoming, it's about to become mainstream. Yo, revelation. Everybody's like, why do dogs always got their head out the window on the highway in the car? <laughs> They're eating the They're eating insects. <laughs> and they got plenty of energy. You know what I like about your revelation, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> They're the kind of revelations that led to shit like the Bible. <laughs> And maybe that's why I'm so willing to They're believe just this. Like, it's just like you come, you're like, it makes like sense in that moment, but you don't need to do like any research. You don't need any empirical evidence. It just aligns in that moment. So if someone goes to you like tomorrow, yeah. hey man, why, is that, why do dogs hang out the window like that? I'm going to say they're, they're, they're eating, eating insects because they find they're high in protein, low in fat. Mm-hmm. They're, they're a good energy source. And, uh, and people look at you like, oh, wow, yeah, sure. They'll totally believe of it. Of course. Yeah. It's all in the delivery. Yeah. Yep. That's like starting a rumor about uh, the actor that he likes to pick up uh, Mexican migrant workers at uh, Home Depot and take them home and rape them. In the shower. They like, choke them out in the shower. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Sounds believable. Yeah. That's how urban legends get started. Sure. Um, so I have a note here that said, there are insects you can eat. I should read the list. There are insects. You, there are. I know. And you, you want to read notes. the list? No, I mean short, but um, yeah, I'm just not prepared for this. Right. Um, I should have are they locusts? This. No, because uh, locusts swarm. No, wait a minute. Can you eat spiders? Spider. Well, you have to eat spiders because you know ten of a year ago climbing your mouth while you're sleeping, which is uh, like unfounded urban legend. You heard that right? You don't like eat six I love spiders. spiders. I don't. I like what they do. Well, they don't need to be in my house though. Like when I'm on the toilet. Like, I don't need to see one near me, like, crawling on the floor. Because I'm exposed, I'm vulnerable. But so it's not you... looking for you. Yeah, you know what the... The only thing worse than seeing a spider is no longer seeing the spider. Like, where'd it go? Where'd that spider go? The only thing worse than seeing the spider is not seeing the spider. Like, what no if longer you saw? It. What if you saw a decapitated body in your bathtub spewing blood would that be worse or better than seeing a spider no 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 it would be worse than seeing a spider but better than no longer seeing the spider <laughs> <laughs> because i know what a corpse is unless we got some reanimator shit going on like okay. the corpse is like not gonna hurt me for all you know the spider's laying its eggs inside the corpse so i'm gonna show it like like how oh yeah but this is how wrong you were of them you may eat the locusts but they swarm. The bald locust. Well, they must have differently jointed legs. Okay. He said no insects that swarm. Except, Are locusts insects? Mm, yeah, they're in the insect column here. And yeah. they swarm like, yo, they, they, they. Do you remember we were at somebody's house on Long Island and like the locusts like yes. came and they just started thro- thrusting themselves against the yes. wall and dying? Yes. And they were like, yeah, that's just normal. Yes. I'm like, I was totally freaking out. What about out those here, other crazy ones that just came out like during COVID? Uh, cicadas? Oh, that's every 17 years. Yeah. yeah. That's insane. That is weird. See? What? I mean, science can't probably explain Can we it, eat right? those? I don't know. Probably yes, because that's why they go to sleep for 17 years. They're like, they've evolved to like, you know, get the fuck away from being eaten. Yeah, but is sleep an answer to that? That's not very productive. You're alive. That's true. And you know what? In 17 years, maybe maybe they're hoping legislation has changed, people have changed, and like, they're not going to be discriminated <laughs> against anymore. Right. They're going to wake up in a better future. Right. It's like going into cryostasis yes. when you have like a disease yes. that can't be cured. Yeah. That's good, yeah. Uh, the bald locusts you can eat, crickets you can eat, and grasshoppers you can eat. But all other winged insects that have four feet are detestable to you. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to determine what's detestable to me. I'm not eating these fucking <laughs> things. Yeah. All right. So uh, that brings us to 1120, Le- 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 Leviticus 11.24, unclean animals. Mm-hmm. And this is basically just how you clean them. No, no it's not. 
You can't touch the carcass. Oh, no, we have to talk about this. Okay. If you touch the carcass of one of these unclean animals, and there's a list, and you know, let's not get into it. It's actually not anything that we really care about, like animals that we... No, we don't care about these animals. But if, if you touch them, you're unclean until evening. Again, he said that about like like taking somebody's sh- property, like their, their, their cloak, that you have to return it by the evening. So if I touch a nasty ass dead alligator <laughs> by seven PM, I'm good. Yeah. So I was like, uh, it doesn't make any sense, but it starts to make sense, man. Good. I'm because glad you thought about this because I didn't. It's because because <laughs> it's twice you've done that to me. I don't, I don't it's twice like you've said it like that. <laughs> These are the fucking animals. That Yahweh and his people are allergic to or have problems with. So you can't be touching them and then like rub but what them what them. changes at night? What magically cleanses I them? I think what they're saying is, you know, if maybe you're only out in the morning touching animals. I don't know. Like after a certain time, like whatever's on them just dies. Like it's like no longer transmissible or whatever. What about if they touch these animals at night? They better they better they better tighten up these restrictions. They're gonna find you know, later chapters are probably going to say, no, you can't even, that's not even good enough. What about this is just stupid nonsense that doesn't mean anything? But what I'm saying is this is a lot of weird details for something that just doesn't mean anything. Sometimes, you know what I think? Sometimes it's possible that they're being given these nonsensical instructions just as a way to make sure that they keep obeying. No, what I mean, it's just like I'm, I'm not opposed. Yeah. Some more shit that like, fuck it. Let's just tell them like all this other shit too, or like everything else in this fucking world now. Even back then, this is all shit to distract the poor people from the rich people running to the bank. You, they keep you fighting over shit, over petty shit like, oh, you only bur- you only ripped one wing off the bird. My people ripped two wings off. Let's fight about it. While everybody else is like, ho ho ho, cashing a check. That makes sense because they've just fled from the Pharaoh. They're about to like establish a society. So the first thing they do is they establish a belief system and some dude named Yahweh and give like the Israelites all these rules that they have to now study, right? Because you're going to have to start studying these rules, right? Because you don't want to get burnt or die or fucking be outcast. So now you're getting all these crazy. Yo, you know what this is like, bro? I just fucking realized it. Here we go. All right. Theologians. After the Civil War in this country, mm-hmm. they passed like all these laws during Reconstruction yep. or post, I'm sorry, post Reconstruction. So because of Reconstruction, African Americans after the Civil War started prospering. They, like they started being years. they started being elected into Congress. They started opening up businesses, right? Then as the North started moving away and we left like the South to its own, the South resorted to what the South does best. You know, being fucking backwoods fucking shitheads. So <clears throat> oh. <laughs> excuse me. So it's good water, I guess. Southerners being Southerners, what do they do? They start passing, like, laws called Jim Crow laws to fuck over, like, blacks. So part of these laws are election laws, like poll tax, right, and literacy tests. Mm. Now, literacy test isn't like, can you read this newspaper? A literacy test can be anything, right? And if you want that person to fail, you set them up to fail. Mm -hmm. So, like, you ask them these, like, questions that there's no right answers to. That's what this is like. That's what, like, Leviticus is. Uh, It's God giving the Israelites all these crazy, contradictory fucking, like, rules. So while they're busy studying all this for a non-existent, like, God, Moses... Can start fucking establishing like a hierarchy. Yeah. Right? Exactly what you said about like establishing like the fucking. Fuck, man. Establishing the classes. When I think about your literacy test, what and you say you're setting up to fail, it's funny that they would use literacy literacy tests as a as a as a prerequisite to voting. 
considering when, no one in the three, South could read. Well, not not only that, but like for 400 years, enslaved people were not allowed to be literate. Right. They were punished if they like tried to get literate. Right. So, of course, that was throwing a roadblock in front of their voting rights. You know, I'm glad in 2022 there's nowhere in this country where they're like throwing roadblocks up in front of, you know, in front of people that want to vote. I'm so glad, like, there's easy access to voting. There's so many different methods of voting. It's it's, it's great. I'll tell you awesome. this, it's, We've come so far. So to bring this full circle, do you know why the literacy rates in America were way above other countries? Because we didn't count the illiterate people? The illiterate no, people? and I don't mean today. I mean, like, when America was established. So, like, think about, like, the 1600s, right? Like, people around the world couldn't really read. You know why people in America could read? I don't know. Because of the Bible? Because of the Bible. Because they were taught to read, so they could read the Bible. Really? Yep. That's interesting. And they stopped at Plymouth Rock because they ran out of beer. I think we discussed that (laughs) once, too. (laughs) Yeah, that's... Beers and Bibles, right? Beers, Bibles, and guns. History according to Scott's dad. (laughs) (laughs) What? What? I'm just saying, it sounds like one of those like nuggets your dad would drop at like you know, yeah. like a dad joke. So if any like unclean animal touches the water, you got to get rid of that water. Yeah. If it falls into an earthen vessel full of water, Joe brought over one of those when we were roommates, <laughs> an unclean animal that we had to like fucking throw out. All I remember is a softball bat, metal bat, hitting our television. No, it didn't hit the television, but yeah. Um, I made sure it didn't hit the television. Yeah, you were like the, you were like the police. I just saw, like, shit was, shit was, was gonna go like, south, quickly yeah. going south. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, so, yeah. If anyone, it wasn't if, anything like those Brazilians. If any. <laughs> if any. <laughs> that were being driven around. Remember that one? You don't remember that? I, I mean, I'm not going to talk about let's it. Let's not talk but, about it because like, let's not alienate an entire country, too. Oh, no. I wasn't making fun of Brazilians. Oh. I was mostly talking about their occupation, what they were doing, what they were doing in our house, that whole scene. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that some other time. Yeah. Like off air. Off air. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, any, any contaminated shit gets an earthen vessel, you got to break the vessel because like mm. it's contaminated. Um, but if it, so, something gets contaminated and goes into the spring or the cistern, it doesn't contaminate the water. But if anything goes in the water with it, that was confusing. I don't know. what. I'm thinking a spring and a cistern, nothing can really get in the source of it. I mean, um, I really just read it and didn't really look into yeah. it as much as you. Dry seeds, if they're on the ground mm-hmm. and like an unclean animal touches it, it's fine. But if they're watered, because now they're going to grow and touches it, that's no good. Um, <laughs> that's no good, man. Yep. You can't leave. Dr- what if, wait, dry seeds that you put on the ground or just dry seeds? What if there are dry seeds on the ground? Yo, so why did he punish the guy who just dumped the dr- his dry seed on the wood planks, the pine planks, and he didn't shoot inside the, his girl, that girl? What? I don't the guy know. That what pulled you... out and dropped his seed on the. Oh, oh that was a wet the seed. seed. That was a wet that seed. That was what? Yeah. Um, gross. <laughs> gross. <laughs> All right. So, um, <laughs> wait, we have to just move on. To, uh, so I'm going to say, in summary, yeah. all these things we've talked about, this is a cleaning process. To stop Yahweh from getting contaminated. All of these rules. That was all Leviticus 11. Clean and unclean foods and unclean animals. Yeah, that's all that was. All right. So it's an, it's an extensive, exhausting list of foods, animals, in order to uh, keep Yahweh alive. Yeah, but you might think, why would me eating an unclean animal be of a concern to Yahweh? I just realized what it was. We don't talk about, like, where the, where, where, where's, where's the defecation go? Bro, when you said that, that's exactly what I thought. So you're going to be, like, shitting in, like, rivers. I don't know where they Maybe. shit back then, actually. No, probably, probably, there's probably got to be a trench, right, for all that it's shit. some place to put shit. there's hundreds of thousands of people there. Right, so it's the be entire pla- Israelite, like, nation. There's got to be a place for the shit to go, and I'm I'm counting on the fact that the shit is probably recycled 
and use it as a fuel or something for Yahweh. Or fertilizer. So he doesn't want unpure shit in you. It's like you don't want bio- antibiotics fed to your cow that you're going to eat. Remember in The Martian, the first thing he did was he collected the shit from, like, the crew that, like... He grew potatoes in his own in their shit. Right. So I'm assuming if they're, like, spending a year at Mount Sinai, they got to, like, gross things to eat. Dude, th- They might man. be, like, using their shit as fertilizer. Yeah, absolutely. fucking literally. And if they're not using their shit as fertilizer, Yahweh's collecting it at night on the seventh day when they're not allowed to be outside. Or... There's a bunch of eight tentacled fucking aliens scooping shit or, up. Or, by the way, I figured it out. I got it. Oh, this is awesome. All right. He's eating goats. And whatnot, right? Because you're offering him like sacrifices. You're offering sacrifices of fowl or goats or whatever. These goats are grazing on the grass where the Israelites are. The grass is fertilized using their shit to grow the crops. So they can only eat very specific things because if they don't, then their waste contains those toxins. Yeah. I don't understand, well, I'm just ex- I'm explaining it for the Southerners who are listening. No, you're, exp- you're working it out for yourself too. That's uh, this is you know we're just working through the process. Yeah, I mean, if you say so, but really, I know that Southerners are listening. <laughs> I've seen the states. <laughs> There's some people in Texas listening right now. Wow, you are really. It needs hurt. to be explained to them. You are really. Be- I don't. Even, I don't consider the South uh, the Texas. I don't consider Texas South. I, that's I, I think I consider it like an animal all to itself. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? I hear you. And, I, and not, I didn't mean an animal in a bad way. No, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I spent an entire vacation in Texas. So the, right. The best of Texas is not the South, but the worst of Texas is very much the South. Oh, okay. Yeah. <sighs> All right. So you can't be eating any creatures that swarm on, a, on their belly, blah, 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 blah. Fuck. All right. We're yeah, done. Yeah, we done shit. it. We're done. So let's move on to Leviticus 12. Oh, this is good. Which is purification of women after childbirth. It seems like a reasonable health concern. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so when women give birth, yeah. if it's a male child, they're they're dirty for seven days. Yeah, they're unclean for seven days, and they have to stay away from people for like a 33. Certain, for 33 till days? Until their blood is pure. And, and I think it's the menstrual, I, I don't know if the dates are right, but it's like they, they have, until, until they get through an entire menstrual cycle, I think is what, the, what they're right. They're what, what do you think would happen... Is there a, a rationale, do you think? Like, when women were like, well, why? We don't understand. Can you explain it? What do you think the the reason was that they gave these women? Like, what does that mean? You're unpure for 33 days. Guys weren't ready to earn their red wings yet. Oh, I'm sorry. So you're telling me you're such a misogynist. A woman. <laughs> I, I, I didn't make this rule. Nah. A woman <laughs> just gives birth... Yeah. Through her vagina yeah. to a bowling ball. Yeah. And it's the man who doesn't want to have sex right away. That's what you're telling me. Because <laughs> the next day the woman's like, oh, baby, I'm so horny. Can you stick yeah. it in me? And yeah. the guy's like, no. Yeah. yeah, because the result of you sticking it in me was just that most enjoyable experience I just went through. So yeah, men famously will stick their cock... Into anything their cock would fit into. Mm-hmm. But you're saying that they're grossed out. Okay. No, I, I hear what you're saying, but I saw, I saw a funny meme. Well, I thought it was funny. You're going to think it's a grandpa meme, but yeah. I think it, it was kind of it was kind of. I'm hoity. looking at that fan right now and going, mmm. <laughs> 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 yeah, that would be like throwing a sausage through a tunnel, man. Um and I saw a meme, it's like, women be like, men will fuck anything. And then it was like, women be like, and it was a picture of a zucchini and Pete Davidson. <laughs> like, <laughs> before you judge who I'm fucking. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah. So, and then if a, if a woman gives birth to a, a woman gives birth to a, a female. By the way, I'm sorry. So Pete Davidson, by the way. Yeah. He must be a cool dude. Amy explained it to me. Oh, she's a woman. So she he know. has borderline personality disorder. He's admitted this. He has borderline personality disorder. And what borderline personality disorder is, it's something, by the way, that uh, Amber Heard was diagnosed with. You want to do your joke? Nah. (laughs) All right. So borderline personality disorder is a tremendous fear of abandonment, right? Mm -hmm. And, but 
what a borderline person tends to do, especially in the beginning of relationships, they give you all of this love because they're so afraid of abandonment oh. that they sh they shower you and they treat you like you're a king or a queen. You know what I mean? Okay. And so Pete Davidson like treats these women, especially in the beginning. Oh, just. Like they're Swans like them. like they've never been treated before in their life, right? And they have this great romance, but then what starts happening up to a borderline is like they're like they take they start taking everything as a slight because they're so afraid of you abandoning them. Like anything you say, they're like they they take that as like you're like trying to break up with them or like you don't really love them. You know what I mean? Yeah, unfortunately, I do know what you mean. So what you're saying is Pete Davidson gets all the ass, but because I take my meds, <laughs> I'm just an asshole. He's off his meds completely, so he's got a disorder that fucking... Well, no, he's actually on, like, meds. <sighs> I'm going to stop taking my meds, and we'll see how this podcast changes real fast. I suggest you don't stop taking your meds because you're barely holding on on your meds. <laughs> is it on here? Is it just me? <laughs> Holy shit. All right. So, yeah, if a woman gives birth to a, a daughter, it's a, it's um, 14 days she's dirty and 30, 66 days yeah, it's she's double. unpure. It's double, right, because apparently giving birth to a girl like – Impurifies you even more. Wow, well, because because a daughter steals the girl, the wife's, the mother's beauty on the way out. It's like she really uh, wrecks. Like she takes. I see. She it. Takes and takes and yeah, takes. And takes little bitch. Yeah, yeah. And the boy just wants to give and give and give back to the mother. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott. Oedipus. Keep taking those All right. meds. All right, <laughs> keep taking those meds. <laughs> All right, so I think we're... Your best hope is the meds that they haven't invented yet, <laughs> all right? <laughs> so Leviticus 12 is pretty much... That's pretty that's much it. summed up. It's then short. That gets us to Leviticus 13, which is leprosy, varieties, and symptoms. Now, um, I was actually reading something else and serendipitously found out in the Bible when they talk about leprosy, they don't mean leprosy specifically. Like yes. leprosy could be like any kind of skin condition. I, I mentioned that a couple episodes ago, actually. Oh, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, because there was like a note, footnote saying any number of skin diseases. It wasn't certain. It wasn't specific. Oh, it's possible that's where I saw it from then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> probably. Either you, or either you actually heard me, which is rare. No, it's, I probably read it. Like and then like. Yeah. Well, why can't you just? Why can you say Scott? I heard you. Because Scott, Scott, man, I do you understand? You. Over the course of a week, my brain takes in so much fucking information. It's impossible to remember every single place that I got it from. That's fine. Just you know. Thanks, I'm Scott, sorry, Scott. You know what? You're right. The no. next time, the next time I learn something from you, you will get the praise that you that you deserve. <laughs> I will give you the praise. I will give you the accolades. I don't want accolades, man. I just want to, I just don't want to be dismissed and like you learned it from some guy on the street. <laughs> that guy? That guy was me. All right. You're right. You're right. All right. So they talk about um, all these skin diseases. And they, <laughs> so if you get a skin disease, you go to the you go to the priest, right? And he examines you. And oh, if he sees yes. Yeah, we gotta talk about this. Go ahead. And he quarantines you for seven days, and then he checks up on you seven days later. Yeah. And if it still hasn't healed, and it doesn't look like it's cured. But it gets, healed, like, very specific. It's like, if, like, the, yeah, yeah. if it's, like, under your skin and has a hair and is purple and looks like this. and Right, right. It does. And if he determines after seven days you're not quite good, it's for another seven days. Yeah. So I want to I want to rewind into the deep past, into the year 2020. If you came up positive for COVID, mm -hmm. it was recommended that you quarantine for 14 days. Mm -hmm. So when everybody's like, why well, is it going to be 14 days, not 13 days, not 12, not 11, not 10, not 9, not 9, how come the airlines get the fuck? Remember, yo, they should not have put Dr. Fauci out there <laughs> and brought science. 
Dr. Fauci should have came out with a Bible in his hand and a cross <laughs> around his neck and going, the Bible says quarantine for 14 days right there in Leviticus. And like, yo, yo, we would have saved 400,000 lives if somebody just quoted this fucking book. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but no, they want to hang Fauci. Unfortunately, they used the Bible only when they were beating up, like when they were using the army to beat up black people. That's when they decided (laughs) to break out the Bible. Yeah, look, look, I'm photo shoot. Dude, man, they just had to quote the Bible. That would have taken care of half the deaths in America. Scott, this is like the reason that you're medicated. So you can think clearly (sighs) like this. I didn't. Over a million people in America have died of this fake hoax, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And all it would have taken was Fauci to be wearing a gold fucking cross around his neck mm-hmm. saying Leviticus said. That's mm-hmm. all it would have fucking taken. Yeah. But no. He came off like a scientist. What a nerd. Mm. Fucking rube. Giving us advice when he's not getting pushed down the stairs, getting fucking atomic wedgies stuffed in his own fucking locker, head in the toilet, fucking swirly. <laughs> you shouldn't put my head in the toilet, Scott. <laughs> my mom put my head in the toilet once. Oh, Once. shit. Now it gives new light to a line I don't like. It's an 88 Magnum. It shoots through schools. <laughs> and the tree outside. <laughs> and the truck across the street. <laughs> All right, so yeah. So then it brings us to... Um, no, it shoots through schools by itself is one of the funniest lines I've ever heard in a movie. It really is. It's fucking great. Do you think that's where they get guns don't kill people, people kill people? No. No, that's the opposite. 88 yes. Magnums shoot through schools. Yes. It didn't say I shoot the Magnum and it goes through schools. Scott, I think any time you come up with an epiphany while we're talking, I, the answer is yes. I think that's exactly where they came up with that. Is there a book of From Johnny, Johnny Dangerously? Is there, is there a book of Johnny Dangerously in this in this book? Dear members of the jury. <laughs> there better be a Fargan book with Roman. <laughs> Fuck Ro- you, you Fargan <laughs> cork is, is Romans really Roman, Mar- <laughs> Roman, Roman Maroney, right? And it wasn't verse 22. It was the club 22. You can't make a movie like that today. It offends too many people? Yes. You can't right. make that movie let's, today. Uh, let's let's save that for like another episode, man. Yeah. Um, all right, so he determines blah 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 blah. So now, if the leprosy spreads all over your body and you're scabbed head to toe and you turned white, you're clean. But if any raw flesh is seen, you're dirty. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. Maybe if you're white, that means blood is leaving your body. No, see, I, here's what I thought. Go ahead. If you turned all white, maybe it was a pigmentation disease. And I'm not even joking right now. So maybe like if you thought you like, had something uh, wrong, like Michael a, Jackson. Like when, a vitiligo. Right. I think that's how you pronounce it. So maybe he understands like, oh no, that's not contagious, that's not a thing, it's a pigmentation concern. Or is it all white, all right? You know what I think it is? I mean, if we're being serious. I think it's uh, radiation poison. He's talking about like, uh, oh, shit. I can recognize what's like radiation poisoning and what's like just dirty like earth shit. Right, because he said there's raw flesh exposed. That's dirty. That's like, but if you're all scabbed, oh, shit. Now, see, now you're, now you're on board, man. Yeah. Now you're seeing this book in a whole different light. Yep. Wow. No, then he goes into boils. It's literally, I'm like, it took like thousands of years for like Dr. Pimple Popper to come out. But that's what this is like about. This is all about, it's just a pimple. And then he goes on to Burns. And he says kind of the same thing. By the way, there's only two priests. So not only do they have to be priests, but now they're dermatologists for 100,000 people. I mean, I get it. You're eating And you know, like traditionally like Jews you know uh, are very concerned about their health they're not like really they're not unconcerned <laughs> I'm pretty concerned they're about not health. like not neurotic people by nature <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> like they're gonna be going to the doctor <laughs> I do not know anything about this 
I mean, growing up around Jews and being a Jew, you know. I didn't you see like, it. You, yeah, I didn't, so I didn't really know that. <laughs> no. I'm saying I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm absolving you yeah, of yeah, anti-Semitism. Yeah. Yes, I am you. saying these things. You're, you're recognizing I'm Ice-T, not Ice Cube. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so he starts talking about, um, dude, he starts talking about Burns. Mm-hmm. And he can tell, like, which burns are contagious and which burns, like, no, that's okay. Because radiation sickening is not contagious, I guess, unless you're... And then, yo. Go ahead. I'm not kidding you, man. I just got that weird feeling in me. Say it. Then he talks about if you start losing your hair and you get itchy skin and you go bald. Dude, that's what happens with radiation poisoning. Sure. Sure. I'm fucking doom, done. Doom, doom. I'm fucking done, man. I'm fucking done with this. Maybe if we people read this shit uh, in a different light. Yeah. Yo. <sighs> Seriously, man. So Same now thing. you're convinced this is an alien. <laughs> I'm convinced it's something real. I don't know if it's an alien, but right. Maybe it's the time travelers fucking now. Field was this or... still part of Leviticus 13 with leprosy and its varieties, or was this uh, yes. 14 with the purification of no, lepers? No, I didn't get, I didn't even get okay. the 14. Yet. We're not even purifying. No. So, oh my god, dude, boils. Yeah. Skin burns. Yeah. Losing your hair. Yeah. Well, dude, I'm... look at any picture after the bomb was dropped on Japan. Yeah. Dude, man. Any picture. Well, no. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You mean about, pictures man. from Japan? Of... You know what I'm talking about, man. All right. Yo, I'm shaking again. I'm yeah. fucking shaking, man. Not shaking. I'm not shaking. I'm shaking. I think it's medication time. <laughs> Fuck. This is why they keep us medicated. Because you don't want people like me finding out the truth. Right. So the congressional hearings on UFOs, not real, this real. I'm just... I'm just and trying. I always thought it was Israel, Israel. Oh, then I realized it's, when I started reading this, oh, I've been spelling it wrong my whole life. It's A before E, not E before A. Yeah. But that might just be that must be a translation error. Is real e, e before A except before Jews? Then it's isn't I before E except in weird kind of a fucking weird thing? I before I before E except after C. Or in weird. And and a whole bunch of other words. It's like thousands of words. That's G-H. Like way. Yeah. Dude, man. It's a fucking alien spaceship, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm fucking. All right. So now listen. If you get. Well, wait. It, you don't. Right. You don't know if it's an alien spaceship. It's some it, radiation it or something. It could be an alien. Or it could be. An alien time could be giving off radiation. Well, you don't true. fucking know. That's true. It could might not even be the alien it might be look let's be realistic in all likelihood <laughs> it's not the actual physical entity right they send drones and it's possible oh, that man. aboard these drones are some kind of like holographic representation right, of right. the entities and that hologram that hologram could be um you know, radioactive. Uh, radioactive. The fuel source to, for all this could be radioactive. Right. All right. All right. Shit. That's why, like, there's always light, because it's like hologram requires yeah, yeah. light. Um, wow. So if you are indeed <laughs> diagnosed with repris- leprosy, you have to wear torn clothes, you have to have disheveled hair, cover up your lip, and cry out, unclean, unclean. <laughs> Okay, no, that's not probably the... Le- and you have to leave live alone outside the camp. That's not woke. That no. is not and woke. And you got to announce, and you got to cover your lip. Oh, you mean wear a fucking mask? That shit's ableist. You mean wear a, wear a mask? Yeah. See, Fauci just said, don't wear a mask, just cover your lips like it says in Leviticus. <laughs> yeah, but the problem is, you, you're, the nose was still exposed. The problem was, too many people were covering just the fucking lips. Listen... If everybody just covered their mouth and left their nose exposed, it still would have helped. It's still more than right. not wearing a mask it's or wearing that something. fucking gross bandana you thought was cool to like put around your face. Not you. I'm just saying. You know. You know who you are. Out I there. understand, but it doesn't seem yeah. like. Whew. Hey. Oh, and if your clothing got like infected, they 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 monitored the clothing. 
for like weeks too, and if mm-hmm. it spread, they burned it. That made sense. Yeah, they were like lab technicians. It's like when people go, "Oh, what's my blood test result?" Well, it's 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 pending another week. Well, why is it pending? Well, they actually do stuff with your blood tests. They don't just like put a litmus stick in there and find out. Like some things, it's sedimentation. They got to see how long it takes to for stuff to happen. Culture's got to develop, and that's what this is. That, that's what the seven day waiting period. Then, like, if it spreads, burn it. Yeah, I think you're getting to the bottom of this, Scott. I'm fucking, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. So now they come to exist. I think Leviticus 14. Do we do 14 or we say? I think you 14? should write a book. <sighs> I think you should write a book. Perspective project. What 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 should it be? Scott writes. You're going to be contributing what though, right? Like you're, I didn't get here by myself. Man. You're going to prove that at the very least the Old Testament was. Uh, you know, written by an alien. About an alien. About alien interactions. With sure. Me. About some shit that happened that had aliens were involved. <laughs> it was alien adjacent. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> do we even want to do 14 right now? I think we have to, actually. I know sure. this episode's running long, sure. but we have to. And you tell me, don't worry about episode length. Purification of lepers and lepers' houses. So again, not only is the priest a dermatologist and a doctor and a lab assistant, if the if someone claims and my a cleaner and like yeah. a, someone who buries bodies, yeah, yeah. I mean, wow, are, yeah. they, are they the only jobs? Like I, they have. You know what the priests are? They're Ryan Seacrest. You know what the priests are? The priests are friends of theirs who are trying to have the books opened up so they could be uh, they can check back friends of ours. Right, right. I'm going to acknowledge you, Joe, but I also want to acknowledge it's Ryan Seacrest because <laughs> that man does everything. <laughs> you could drop the unemployment rate in America by yeah, half if I Ryan know. Seacrest gave up some of his work. He's awful, by the way. He's insufferable. Have you ever like really like... I just made a comment about him yesterday on Kelly Ripa. He was Kelly Ripa. Yeah. And he wasn't wearing like socks on his... Like he was just wearing... Which I don't care if you wear shoes or no socks. Mm-hmm. But it was like almost like he was produ- like he was pushing in front of the camera. Like, like cool, cool, cool. I am not wearing socks. Like, all right. All right. Come on. Okay. <sighs> all right. You want to say something That's, about... That sounds like a weird like <laughs> problem to have with someone. But all right. Uh, weird, weird flex. Yeah. Yo, what if he's ca- he's Casey Case and reincarnated? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh, all right. So when you clean the process of cleaning the clothing, if you didn't burn it, was, I'm going to go into detail That's after racist, this. By the way, so you're saying because Casey Kasem was from that part of the world, like he's reincarnated? Who the fuck is Casey Kasem from? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll look it up afterwards. Yo, and, and you'll see why that shit is racist. Ignorance is not racism. Yeah. All well, right, that's so, exactly what racism is. It's ignorance. Well, no, I got you there, but like, oh. all right, Southern guys, uh, why don't you uh, write in and let <laughs> us know? Purification of lepers and lepers' houses. So the priest, not a, if somebody claimed it's not me, it's my dirty house. The priest had to go there and examine it, and they had to look for the red, the yellow, the gold, the black, the brown stuff on the wall. They're talking about mold. Mm. That's all they're talking about. Mm-hmm. And to cure it, this is the same way you cure the clothing and the people. They went into this whole ritual where you gotta you gotta take um two birds, kill one of them, take the cedar wood, the crimson yarn, and the hyssop, and sprinkle the person with it. That's the same solution to on the walls of the house. These, these like the crimson yarn, whatever crimson yarn is made out of, whatever gives it the crimson, is the chemical with the hyssop and the cedar wood and the bird blood that kills mold. It's like Biblical bleach. Counterpoint. Biblical bleach. Counterpoint to your alien theory. We're not talking about I think we now. have to re-examine the time traveler aspect because let's say in the future we've got time travel and historians go back into the past to study like time periods, right? But unlike Star Trek, there is no prime directive, right? So it's not as Temporal concerning for directive. them. So it's not as concerning for them to like not be seen or not interfere in a population. Mm. Not saying that the historian time traveler wants to interfere, but let's say they get seen or spotted. Mm. Now they kind of have to like justify why they're there because they want to still resume being there. But they know 
that their presence is dangerous to the people there because there's like more radiation on them. You know, they're from the future. Who knows what kind of technologies they're using? You know what I mean? Who knows how we've evolved in the future, by the way, with like all this plant-based fucking food that we're eating now and like what? who the fuck knows? And we're immune to old stuff. Maybe we're not immune to old stuff, and they're not immune to new stuff. So we have to watch the cross-contamination. And who knows? Maybe like 2,000 years from now, humans are basically part of like a fucking singularity where we're all like basically just like bodies tapped into like the Matrix, and like that's how we live and survive. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying the Matrix that we're being controlled by machines. I mean, we ourselves have willingly implant the chips into our heads to stay alive longer you know Which what we, i mean we, and we have got will. like bionic shit and you know will. what i mean and so now we are all collectively part of like a singularity we're all like online all the time and who knows what kind of fucking radiation that gives off and now a time traveler goes back in time and now they're teaching you how to fucking like Clean yourself. And maybe this time traveler understands he can't get back out of this situation without these raw ingredients. So he has to take this population and kind of use them. Right. But keep them dumb at the same time. Like, understand I'm just a god. I'm just I'm not some time traveler just really needs some plutonium to get the fuck out of here. 12 monkeys. Remember 12 monkeys? No. And I think there's a reason why I don't remember it. Because of what we're doing right now. That shit was wiped out of my mind because I probably would have opened the doors of perception <laughs> years ago. Yeah. So they had to sprinkle all this shit. Seven times kill the mold. So my house, my uh, one of my houses, you know, uh, you know, all, I got my big real estate holdings mm-hmm. got wiped out by a hurricane, floodwaters. Mm-hmm. Had Serve Pro had the 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 motto like we're doing God's work. What Serve Pro? They're like a company that comes in like like it never happened. Like mm-hmm. they come in and clean your shit up, like, oh, like fires, an e- like floods, an ET? like what? Like at the end of ET when those people came in, yeah, but they're more the like biohazard. They're more like above board. Oh, yeah. okay. they, they do they mold remediation asbestos. Um, they're more out. above board than those people at <laughs> yeah. the end of ET. I would think so. <laughs> Holy so, shit! Right. So, Serve Pro, if you're listening, we we, we take advertisement money. Um, so, what if they just said? We're doing God's work, like in Leviticus 13. Like, we will clean that (laughs) fucking shit, man. You're talking about mold, man. Yo. Leviticus 14 is about mold their company. Leviticus 13? 14. I'm sorry. 14. 14. Yeah. And they'd be like, what the fuck is that? Oh, they clean your house, Mm -hmm. man. You, Sprinkle it with this high sop yeah. and the birds. You have and to the, Google Leviticus 14 to find out what the yeah. company does. And you know what? People will do that because they're curious. Sitting in traffic. They're passengers. Even if they're driving in Tesla self-mode. That, by the shit. way, is an awesome like language that people can learn if they want to talk in secret. So instead of like doing Pig Latin, you... You talk in like what happens in a particular like Bible chapter, you know, like we'll look like if we see some asshole or whatever, we can look at each other and be like Exodus 12. And then like, you'll know exactly what I'm saying. You know, you'll be like uh, Aaron, his (laughs) arms wide. (laughs) 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 Uh, Nadab and Abihu at Sinai. (laughs) Those yeah. are the two guys that got burned up. <laughs> right, right, right. I got it. I got it. Um, yeah. All right. So uh, I think we're about to call this quits, man. I can go more into this, but this is this is re reaffirming, strengthening my argument that this is yeah, this is some this is some alien yeah. shit, man. So we're gonna leave it off at Leviticus fourteen, and uh, we'll pick it up next time with uh, Leviticus fifteen, which is concerning bodily discharges. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Peace. Ciao.